Okay, in this video, we are gonna talk about infectious disease. As coronavirus cases spike, I think it's important to talk about this, and this goes for the flu as well. So this model right here is looking at the epidemiology of infectious disease. And so you kinda of need three things, right? You need the pathogen. So the flu virus, there's a bunch of them. Coronaviruses, there's also a bunch of those, right? Um, so you need one of those going around, and they're all different. You need a conducive environment, and so a lot of these, the flu, coronavirus, they seem to spread in colder temperatures, and that's why we see uh, coronavirus spikes when the temperature cools down. Same with flu virus. Uh, basically what happens is when the temperature is colder, that virus can live longer on surfaces, potentially in droplets in the air. So uh, that's why we see spikes right around these times when it gets colder. So I think we might be in for a long winter. Hopefully not. Um, we'll see what happens, right? And then you need a susceptible host. And there are a bunch of things that go into being a susceptible host. We're going to talk about those in a second right here of how you can improve your own immune system. Uh, genetic factors go into it, right? Age goes into it. Uh, the you know older people, they uh, a lot of them die from the flu every single year. And now the coronavirus seems to be hyper deadly to older people, um, not so much for younger people, right? Um, so you need that as well. Um, and then different disease states, which we're going to talk about. So let's see how we can keep ourselves healthy during this time and during all times, you know. Um, so how do we maintain our immune system? We talked a lot about different ways throughout the semester, but we've never bulked them all together. So number one here, we got to be sleeping seven plus hours. Uh, there's lots of research that shows your immune system suffers if you're not sleeping because sleep is when you recover. And, you know, if you get four hours of sleep in one night, your natural killer cells, which seek out and eliminate different pathogens, um, they're decreased by 70%, which is like a huge hit. I mean, I like to imagine your immune system as little soldiers, right? And they kind of fight for you. And it's like, if you lost 70% of the army that keeps your body healthy and defends your body, that's not a great thing, right? And that's in one night. So if you're repeatedly doing that, we got to get our sleep right. I mean, that's just going to help you with the flu, with coronavirus, just across the board. Um, next, we have exercise. So 150 minutes a week plus two strength sessions. Now with exercise, um, temporarily it can reduce our immune system. Basically what it is, is it's like training your army that is your immune system, right? So uh, exercise creates some inflammation and inflammation in the short term can weaken our immune system. Uh, let's say you went on a you went like you ran a marathon you raced a marathon after a marathon your immune system is actually weak especially if you ran it really hard because you just put a lot of effort in um, but if you're exercising like 30 minutes a day an hour a day consistently over time what you're doing is your immune system is becoming more robust because you're testing your immune system right with a little bit of inflammation then you go to sleep that immune system becomes stronger then you test it again with some exercise you go to sleep the immune system becomes stronger so exercise is training your immune system to be able to fight um, and then here we have managing body composition. So uh, what happens if we have excess fat mass is that excess fat mass causes inflammation in our body, just like exercise does. Um, however, if we are carrying too much fat mass, if your body doesn't get to recover from that, right, if it's always just getting that inflammation, it's going to kind of beat down your immune system. And so we see this with coronavirus. Like um, my stats are going to be wrong, but the last I heard was that uh, people who carried excess fat mass we're five times more likely to die from the coronavirus. So um, that's important to note, right? So we want to maintain a healthy body composition because it helps our immune system fight off different diseases. Um, all right, on top of that, we have nutrition, right? And with nutrition, if you're not eating enough calories, uh, your immune system is going to take a hit because your immune system requires calories, right? Your army needs to be fed in order to be able to fight. So uh, we need to make sure that we're eating food and a variety of food is going to be best. So you're getting all those nutrients. If you remember from our... Uh, our nutritional analysis, most of our diets were deficient in vitamin D. And vitamin D has been one of the only nutrients that has been shown to help against respiratory infections. So uh, I highly recommend subs, um, uh, supplementing with vitamin D. Uh, sunlight is good as well, you know, when people are not going outside, you know, the lockdowns, uh, yeah, they might help stop the spread, although the World Health Organization doesn't recommend lockdowns anymore because depression, which causes stress and all kinds of things. Who knows? It's a hard decision. It's, it's really hard to make the right choice. So, you know, try to not get too political over this stuff because everybody's trying to do what they think is correct. Uh, but it, you know, there's always, there's never like a hundred percent best answer. So, okay. So I highly recommend, you know, um, dairy products have vitamin D, try to increase your vitamin D in some way during this time, whether it's a pill or whatever you got to do. Um, along with this nutrition and managing body composition, 
is uh, diabetes. So diabetes puts people at a higher risk as well because coronavirus seems to attack the vascular system and diabetes is a vascular disease. So, uh, and this just goes for the rest of your life. If you're in a disease state, your immune system is gonna be much more vulnerable. So we wanna maintain a healthy body, right? And then managing stress. Um, with social distancing and uh, lockdowns and this stuff, it's causing people financial stress. It's causing people, you know, uh, family stress. Uh, you know, you're not exercising, which is going to cause stress. People might not be sleeping very well. Substance abuse issues are skyrocketing, right? Um, uh, you know, alcohol and marijuana decrease our immune function, and the rates of people taking, drinking more, and smoking more are just going crazy. So. Um, you know, try to manage your stress in healthy ways if you can via exercise, via sleep, social interaction, you know, do it safely um, if you can. So we got to maintain our own immune system first. That's, that's your first step, right? And then let's talk about reducing the spread. So number one, staying home when you're sick. Now, you know, the coronavirus is a terrible thing. I think one of the good things that might come out of this is uh, people might like start staying home more when they're sick and I think that would be a good thing because you know the flu is pretty deadly and lots of years I mean 60 80,000 people will die of the flu right um, and so you know if you are sick we need to start I think staying home especially now that things are digital I think that'll be better make sure you wash your hands you know after you use the bathroom or before you eat uh, you know and try not to use your phone when you're in the bathroom because what you do is you you know, go to the bathroom, use your phone, wash your hands, then you grab your phone again and your phone may have pathogens on it. So try to do that. That's a great way to knock down the spread. Sneezing and coughing into your elbow is what's recommended, right? Kind of like this. That's what you want to do there so it doesn't blast and spread out. Masks. Let's talk about masks real quick. So with masks, yes, they do reduce the spread, right? Because coronavirus is in droplets and then droplets can, they don't go as far if you have a mask on. Uh, but, you know, I see a lot of people in big stores um, uh, wearing masks and kind of just, uh, you know, especially people with high risks. And it's like, yeah, you should be having one on, but just be aware that masks aren't going to stop the virus completely, right? Um, so masks seem to be beneficial. Um, so just, you know, but they don't solve all problems, right? Um, same with lockdowns, right? They might be beneficial, although the states that locked down they didn't seem to have much less case spread. So it's really hard to make these decisions, right? I don't, I don't know what the correct answers are. So, um, you know, try to not get too political and stress out about all this stuff because, you know, people are just trying to do what they think is best and everybody has different ideas. Um, okay, and then vaccines. So vaccines are coming out. These are pretty interesting. Uh, it's the fastest we've ever been able to produce vaccines. Like this is a miracle that we got these uh, all out already and they seem to be effective. Um, you know, I'm a fan of vaccines. They're not always 100% uh, safe, but they do seem to be pretty good right now. And what's going to happen is they're going to roll vaccines out first to the hospital workers, right, to protect them. And so, you know, these people, they've been, you know, on the front lines this whole time. Uh, they're going to be, you know, there's been tests on these vaccines, but not long-term studies. So they're going to be vaccinated first. Um, and then it's going to be the older population next that's going to be vaccinated. And then it'll be um, distributed to the general public. So if you're healthy, right, some people might, might not want to get this vaccine. I don't think that's a, um, a terrible thing, right? People are going to disagree. Um, but I don't think it's a, a terrible idea to get one either. I think it's probably, uh, you know, I think we can, I think that they've done enough research to, you know, if you put out a vaccine that causes lots of problems, you're going to lose a lot of money. And these big pharmaceutical com companies do not want to lose a lot of money. So I think you can generally trust uh, these new vaccines that are coming out. And same with the flu vaccines, right? Flu vaccines, not always 100% effective, but they do seem to reduce spread. So, um, all right, I think that's good for this video. You know, take care of yourself, especially during holidays. Just try to be smart, right? Um, I don't want to tell you to not see your family, right? Because that stuff's important and it helps, uh, you know. So just be wise, try to reduce the spread, try to take care of yourself, and uh, there you go. Have a good holiday. I, that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.